given the game that's being played here, I might actually be talking a little less than normal during my section towards the end here, so I might actually be saying a couple things here that I normally would there. Just kind of a heads up. So this is Ninja Gaiden, well known for being irritating and frustratingly difficult. It's going to be interesting. One of the things that I remember most about this game, though, believe it or not, is the X-coordinate. In other words, this is one of a game, many games did this, where the enemies actually spawn based on a specific coordinate as to where the camera is, which is effectively where the player is. And so when it hits this particular coordinate, a specific pixel, the enemy, if it is not, you know, the, the uh, monster object, if it is not already spawned, spawns and then starts doing its AI. Now, it is possible to play with this. You can spawn it, go back over, and then make it so that, you know, it, it despawns entirely. You can also set up a thing where you kill it and it instantly respawns, especially if you happen to be standing right on the particular coordinate. The thing is, this is usually done because it's very quick and easy to code. It's a very simple way to make sure enemies spawn. There is a huge issue with it, and that's that in many games it tends to be frustrating, especially if the player is at a particularly difficult jumping section and they just want to get through this and these enemies keep spawning because they're at the a corner or whatever. There is some debate amongst uh, fellow uh, people who are geeks like me as to whether or not they deliberately used the x-coordinate in order to add to the difficulty of the game or they used the x-coordinate because it's what they could use based on the limitations of the time and then later designed some of the levels to te keep that in mind because there's no doubt that especially later on that x-coordinate spawn thing is deliberately used to make the game harder. <laughs> I'm sure you can think of several examples yourself. Those frickin' birds! But... The interesting thing here is that Ninja Gaiden is a fascinating example of both a game that is genuinely hard, has some honest-to-God, uh, well-designed levels, and is artificially hard, and has some things that are just designed to frustrate you and make you memorize what's going on, you know, that kind of a thing. So, kind of an interesting uh, subtext, but I gotta be honest, the gameplay is not what really sings for me in Ninja Gaiden, it's the story. The fact that this game has a story at all was kind of rare for the NES era. Now, I know, I know, a lot of games had a little snippet in the manual, but usually that was literally it. You get a paragraph in the manual, and that's your story. It's the Doom approach to storytelling. Sometimes, in a rare occasion, you'd actually see an ending at the end of that, which would kind of wrap things up. However, this game not only had a story that was advanced, you know, that was presented in the game, holy crap, but it actually had cutscenes, which is my second point. This game's presentation of its story, it, it had dialogue like other games, you know, RPGs and whatnot had, but it had actual honest-to-God cutscenes. Do you know how rare that was in this era? And they were brilliantly done. Um, very, very simple. Usually a, a grand total of two, on occasion three frames of animation. And very specific, very careful usage of the NES hardware and the layering in order to properly give it kind of an artistic style. I'll point these things out probably when we go through, but that's probably what impressed me most about Ninja Gaiden. The game itself is interesting, uh, kind of fun to play, not a game I really enjoy that much, and the story, the actual plot itself of the story, well, let's be honest, it's pretty much straight out of most 80s and 90s action flicks. Not that I'm saying it's a bad thing, but it's not the most engrossing thing in the world. It was the presentation that always really sang to me about this game, and I'm really looking forward to seeing it again. Before we cut to third, I want to add one other thing. I have several badges. I don't literally have these badges, nor do I have any names for them, but they're points of, of pride that I have from when I was a kid. You know, I beat Mega Man 3 without taking any damage. It took me months to practice for that, but I did it. I beat, uh, you know, all the Mega Mans, all the NES Mega Mans, without using special weapons except where absolutely required, like in Mega Man 2, where you need the Crash Buster to beat the wall thingies. Um, I beat Mike Tyson once on the NES. You know, that kind of a thing, right? One of those badges is that I beat Ninja Gaiden on the NES. Uh, it's actually kind of a funny story because I was, I had been playing the game uh, quite a bit. It had just come out, and I woke up early one day before I was heading off to... to well, I, I don't need to tell you the grade, but... <laughs> advanced high school. Or, I mean, damn it. I was heading to school, and before I headed to school, I had the nest set up, and I'm sitting there playing it. And I had well, I was at uh, stage five or six something. It was way into the game, and I was, I was really on a roll. And I knew, because, you know, this was a common problem with the NES era, I couldn't just save my progress. So I asked my mom, can I just leave this going while I'm at school today? And she looks at me weird, and I explain, and she's like, okay. But if it fries out, you know, then that's that's that. And I'm like, yeah, I know, I know. So I left the NES on, paused, 
Went to school. Was I, I don't remember anything about that day. I, I, it was just ver I was very distracted. Get home. NES is still working. Still works to this day. It's the same NES. Fired up and beat the game. Um, I actually beat Ninja Gaiden. And I know that that's silly in hindsight because I'm sure most modern gamers would pick it up and say, well, this is just a joke. But at the time, it was something that had been frustrating the crap out of me and my friends at the time. And so, yeah, I still consider that a badge. That being said, I'm a little nervous this time because Mario 3, Die Hard, and the next few games that are coming up on the list, I have no problems with those. I know I'll beat those. This is the first game in, like, the first ten on the list that I'm a little bit nervous that I might actually not be able to beat. I might just get too frustrated within my time, my self, self uh, time limit, and I might actually put it down. So, we'll see. Either way, why don't we go to third and see what he thinks. Third? Oh, this isn't that bad. I thought Ninja Gaiden was supposed to be hard. I heard a lot about this game and its legendary difficulty, so I was actually coming into this prepared to be dying over and over again straight out of the gate. I don't really understand who exactly I'm fighting, but whatever. If they're trying to fight a ninja, then they probably have a death wish anyway. Getting a little bit tougher, but it's still pretty manageable. Birds, 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 birds! Okay, now we're starting to have problems. There's stuff everywhere, and now it jumps around even more. I don't... I, what do you want from me, game? He's... he's sad. Get it? He's... he's upset. Whatever. Right. Okay. This game started out pretty well, but pretty soon devolved into a frustrating series of replaying levels over and over again. And I was never really a huge fan of these precise platformer games, and let me tell you what, this is one of them in spades. Although there's honestly many different subtypes of platform games, I'm putting this in with those precise platformers, because that's what it started to feel like near the end. You could call it a ninja style platformer, just a platformer, whatever. It doesn't matter in the end. <sighs> okay, you know what? Let's start from the beginning and with some positive things. I was honestly impressed that there was a story to this game. This is actually the first non-RPG NES game I've played where they've presented a story that I could follow. It, sure, it's simplistic and nothing really original, but they actually went out of their way to put a story in it and give you an explanation for why you were advancing through these levels. I'm not sure where the football players and the other weird enemies fit into this, but let's not examine this more than we need to. It made the game as a whole feel more like a complete experience, that I had accomplished something at the end by completing the story instead of just beating the game. It gave me a drive to beat the game by wanting to see the main character succeed in his endeavors, definite plus. For the most part, the controls were pretty solid, although I still struggled with doing wall jumps up until the very end. I never quite could master going straight up a wall, and you obviously could do that since I did it several times, but I could never get it exactly right. Sometimes I could progress, and sometimes I couldn't. Other than that relatively minor thing, it was actually very responsive to what I wanted it to do. The music and sound effects for this game, while simplistic, were catchy and appropriate. I found myself enjoying several of the tracks in this title. They were energetic and gave you a great sense of action all throughout the game. Killing enemies gave you a satisfying swish of the sword followed by a thwack as they exploded, and unique sound cues made it very evident what was happening. Good events like obtaining a power-up or hitting an enemy had a rising higher pitch, and negative events like an enemy hitting you had a falling lower pitch. This may sound basic and a bit duh, but I've run into games before where they haven't done this and they've suffered for it. Until you got used to what sound effect did what, you couldn't tell from just the audio cue what was actually happening. Audio cues are important feedback to the player, and not implementing them properly just confuses them even further. Okay. Now that we've got that out of the way, and I've praised them for not screwing up sound effects of all things, I'm afraid the next few things I'm going to talk about are going to be negative. So let's talk about power-ups. All throughout this game, I had little clue about what power-ups did what, and I never really fully figured that out, even after beating the game. It gives you little indication as to what they do, how much of those power-up points they take to use, or whatever that's called, or even how you activate them. One I know of is activated just by jumping and attacking rather than the use button that the other ones seem to have. Because of the nature of the game, it's really hard to experiment with the power-ups too. Thankfully, you don't need them to beat the game, so it's not essential that you figure that system out. 
and they were a good idea, just a bit poorly implemented, even for a NES game. Speaking of frustrating things, here's the number one thing that drove me through the roof. The gotcha traps. Jump across the pit and suddenly out comes an enemy right at you. Can't adjust your position, and unless you have superhuman reflexes, and you just happen to be in the right position to slash them with your sword, you're going to get hit and fall in some pit, and die. This forces you to replay the level until you have memorized all of these areas and know exactly where to jump to avoid instant death. I don't think this is a really good way of introducing difficulty to the game, because it often carries with it a great deal of frustration for the player. You don't really give the player a sense that he's been fairly beaten. Further increasing my frustration was the seemingly wonky nature of the hitboxes of the player and the creatures. There were many times when I would seemingly swing my sword right through enemies and cause no damage, generally when they were up close. I don't know if this was intended or not, but it did lead to several situations where I was dancing back and forth, trying to hit a guy who was just sitting there pushing me off the ledge. Not incredibly fun. Once I was pushed off of that cliff and finished my lives, guess what? Restart the level. This wasn't as big of a deal until I reached the end portion where I died a lot. There were many in exasperated sigh as I had to reset the level. The bosses in this game were also... not great. They were either too easy, as was the case for all of them, except for the next to last boss, or insanely difficult in that particular instance. The last boss was honestly the only one where I felt like I was approaching somewhat of an interesting boss fight. In that fight I had to dodge random flying bobs of bubblegum while slashing off various pieces of the boss. It was at just the right speed so I felt like I could do it without having to memorize a pattern, yet fast enough that I didn't feel like it was just a cop out. I was able to get what was happening pretty quickly after some trial and error at the fight, and it was, well, honestly kind of fun. Every other boss, with the exception of the last one before that one I mentioned, I just slashed at their knees until they died. That's how easy they were. When I sat down and counted out the total amount of footage I'd recorded for this run, I was actually surprised. It was much shorter than I remember it being. You know how they say, time flies when you're having fun. The opposite applied here. This game seemed much longer than I remember it being because I was just slogging through the final portions of the game. It wasn't fun at that point, it was just me trying to get through it so I could see the ending. I didn't feel challenged, I just felt frustrated. All in all, I probably won't play Ninja Gaiden again. I don't regret playing it, but it's really just not my cup of tea. I wouldn't say that it wasn't fun at times, especially during the beginning stages, but the frustration just got in the way too much, especially towards the end. During that period, it was more of an endurance run than anything. Unfortunately, its age is probably going to work against it, and it'll definitely feel like a less polished version of more modern platformers. But you know, even if so, you should probably give at least the first few levels a try, if only to appreciate how much we've come since then. This game receives two badges, the Save the Princess badge for completing it, and this other little guy. And I think you can probably guess what this one means. I was really on the fence about giving this another certain badge, the badge of quality. In the end, I decided against it because I do think it's honestly a good game. It's not a game I would rank up there as a good quality game. There are enough things wrong with it that I don't really think it deserves that badge. Did you hear what you said? This came out in 1989. I guess that dates me a bit, doesn't it? So for those of you who missed the intro there, it was all about the obvious. You know, it had the awesome music, and this is also awesome music. Love the music in this series. Um, it was all about your father sending you a message about how he was going off to a duel to the death and telling you you should find this archaeologist, uh, Walter Smith, I believe it was. And avenge him! Actually, he said, uh, be always brave, I believe was the exact quote. Whoops. There we go. And I find that amusing in its own way, because I actually kind of forgot that the original plot of this game, and by that I mean, like, the plot you know at the beginning of the game, was all about, uh, salvaging the fact that your father was killed and getting revenge on his killer. I mean, I knew about the whole father dying plot, obviously. It's just that part of it really fades really quickly, doesn't it? 
You know, it's actually funny to me in a kind of a cultural sense, these Coke signs up here. Actually, I should pause the game so I don't die here because of the timer. Um, those are Coca-Cola symbols, right? It's pretty obvious, especially in hindsight. But I mention this because if you try to do this nowadays, you'd either need some kind of sponsorship deal or they might come after you or sue or for defamation or whatever. There's always legal entanglements that come with it, whether positive or negative. There's still the hassle of having to deal with that. You didn't really have to deal with that back then. It was just like, yeah, let's just put this here because it's intended to show off that this is that kind of an area, right? See, Earthbound for another good example of this. So, of course, we go into a barn. What's the first thing we see? Big old Cyclops dude. Apparently, Freddy Krueger decides to frequent this bar. Ah, not very well practiced in this. Ah, oh well. So I mentioned this in my foreword, but I all, I knew this was coming. Watch this. One frame there, another frame for him turning his eyes, and then it, he changes position and she comes out from behind him. I know that seems kind of silly and extremely simple because, again, it's very few frames of animation, but it's surprisingly well directed. And the put to gray to show that you've been shot, you know. Oh my gosh! I also like after fighting through all that, you know, it took her to bring us down. I'm your future love interest. Wait, I'm not supposed to know that. Except I would know that even if I hadn't already played this game. Like I said, the plot of this game is actually really simple. And yet, I, I just have to praise it because even now I'm actually still enjoying its presentation of it. One of the other things I want to kind of praise about this game is the tightness of the controls. It's actually, that's probably going to sound a little bit on the weird side, but um, you'd be surprised how many games, even in the modern era, just do not have precision when it comes to the control setup. You know, there's a few frames delay on you doing something or it actually happening, or maybe there's a little bit of animation that has to play first. You know, how many games have you played in the modern era where it feels like you're sluggish or you're on ice skates or whatever? You know what I mean. Best power up for this section ever. So, one other thing, and this is a definite negative, and I'm surprised I forgot about this. Uh, on any times where there's a thing where you have to go down, whoops, you have to actually walk down. You can't um, fall down. If you fall down, you die. Even though the stage actually proceeds downwards, you still die. One thing this game does suffer from, and most early NES games suffer from this, is a general lack of, well, guide, really, I guess is probably the best way to put that. Because, um, unless you actually know what all these power-ups do, and really the only way to know them is to have a guide or to experiment, you're probably kind of lost on what the hell's going on here. I gotta be honest, other than a couple bosses, the bosses in this game are surprisingly easy. It's kind of weird. Stages are the difficulty kind of a game. Man, this really is straight out of an action flick. Not that I'm complaining, it's actually really awesome. Now, one thing I will say that's kind of a negative about these games is they really do rely a fairly large amount on memorization. There's only so much reflexes and you know, so-called skill will actually help you in a game like this. No, I'm not saying that to excuse my own bad playing. My reflexes are bad. You guys have seen my bad reflexes in action. But if you don't know what's coming, there are some things where you just can't actually deal with it. Not until you see it. We're pretty much officially getting to the part where things are going to get hard, too. Uh, I know quite a few people who consider Ninja Gaiden a classic. Uh, myself included. However, I will freely admit, and I'm sure several of those people would as well, that, well, put simply, most of us usually play this game uh, basically up until about this level. 
Uh, actually, it's a, the cliffs level, which I forget which number that is, but it's coming up pretty soon here. And then we just kind of stop, because at that point the game just kind of starts spitting in your face as you're trying to play it. At least that's my memory, of course. I have, I'm not there yet. We'll see if it's actually that bad when I get there. I totally screwed that up. No! Recovery! One thing I do like about this game is the different sub-weapons do offer you a fairly large uh, tactical choice. Oh crap, I think that's my last life. Okay, that's a good time to talk about the live system and how it works in this game. Most games have a setup where you, if you lose your life, you go back to the current screen. If you lose all your lives and game over, you go back to the current area. And what is defined as those it varies as you're going throughout the game. So there's no like hard and set rule as to what is and isn't going to be one or the other. I mention this because that was actually very rare for the NES era. Hell, that was even rare for the kind of the SNES era in some ways. Usually, in games of this caliber, and indeed in some other games we'll be playing later on, you die, you you lose, you go all the way back to the beginning. In fact, actually, we've already played a game like that called Die Hard. We just played that. You lose, you die, all your progress is reset. Now here, okay, now watch, I die. This is actually kind of a bad example, but I die, I go back to the beginning of this area. Or this uh, screen, actually, is how I tend to think of it. It's funny, I always play better the first time, and then I just get worse over time. Anyone else see that? Anyways. But, no! Um, yeah, so it was very rare that Ninja Gaiden was as weird as this sounds for a game so infamously difficult to be lenient when it came to that particular aspect of frustration, and I think that's really the reason why I find that significant. Because that whole game over, lose all your progress thing, that's really just an aspect of frustration. The only reason designers ever did that on purpose back in the day was to pad out gameplay. No actual good reason for doing it. They wanted the game to seem longer. Not by actually making it longer, not by adding content, not by really working hard to make interesting boss fights or whatever. By the way, that was the x-axis in action there. Oh, I screwed that up completely. Um, but by just padding it out and making it have to start over every time you screw it up at all. There's a lot of games like that on the NES, and some on this NES, and actually there's a few even in the more modern era that do that. Something I've always disagreed with as a gamer, and as a designer. Damn it, I thought I was going to keep that going for a bit longer. One thing that does take some getting used to in this game is the hitboxes are very unforgiving, and not as well defined as one would hope for them to be. That is another good example of the X-Spawn thing I talked about in the preamble, by the way. I do it artificially just for you guys, but hell with that, I won't actually beat this stage. <laughs> I've been talking on this stage for a while because I keep dying on this stage. This is probably a good time as any to mention that we're not using save states. Well, I'm not using save states. Uh, I've talked a third about this. We're both in agreement that if we are going to use save states, that's going to be a special exception, and only for games that are incredibly frustrating or pissing us off. Uh, Ninja Gaiden is a game I've beaten before without cheats or anything like that, and I would like to do that again. It's worth noting I haven't actually beat Ninja Gaiden in a rather long time. Like, an extremely long time. So, I'm not 100% sure if I'm actually capable of pulling this off. If I do start using save states, I'll say something in the interest of, uh, I don't know, journalistic integrity or whatever. Man, I'm sure I'm getting good at this level. Shoot. I guess that's how it works, isn't it? Practice and all that. Okay, if I don't stop screwing around, I might actually lose this guy. Which is silly, because you can actually kill his projectiles. See? Just like that. Screw it, I'll be patient. Oh. Here's a question. How many of you pronounce it Jacquio? Or Yakuakio? Or uh, actually, I've heard a couple others, but Jackio is the one I've heard most often. Curious what you guys call it. One other thing I like, and I've kind of forgotten, is just how much 
story there is in this game. I mean, granted, I already praised the story, but I'm talking the cutscenes are surprisingly long. In some cases, I'm spending more time in the cutscenes than I am in the next actual stage. And I, I love that. It's awesome. I, I genuinely forgot just how much of this stuff there was. It's surprising, not just for the era, but, you know, for a, a side-scrolling action... Well, I want to call it an RPG, but that would, of course, be completely wrong. Uh, platformer, I guess, is really the word for it. I mean, hell, how much story was in Mario Brothers 3? Not to bash Mario Brothers 3, but you get the point. Okay, so you want to see an example of the X spawning coordinate thing in a nutshell. This right here is a great example of it. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and show this death here. I died going up here, but that was a game over, not a death. So, I go all the way back here, see? It does punish failure, but it doesn't punish it by, you know, screwing you over in the face and telling you to screw you, as many other games of this type can and do, and, well, let's be honest, this own game sequels do, but we'll be talking about those later. So it's debatable as to whether or not the designers of this game actually made a fallacy in their design concept. By the way, Infinite X spawning again. Sigh. Anyways, um, the sub-weapons, they're pretty much straight out of Castlevania, but no real effort is made to explain how that works or what, what does what, unless you just experiment with it. See, so you've got those little symbols, whatever those actually say, I'm not really sure, and each of the sub-weapons uses a different amount of those. And once you've, you know, used them up, then you can't use them anymore. In some cases, that means the ability goes away. In some cases, it means, you know, things just stay there, whatever. There's lots of different ways that can interact with the gameplay as you're going through it. See, for example, now I have the spin slash thing, which is great. Because it means I can spin slash, but only while I have the sub power to do it. So that section I just did, I tied there, looks like, about eight times. Um, that's pretty much... 101 for birds are evil in video games. For anybody who's never actually heard of that, you've probably not played this game. But I'm kind of being serious. It's kind of common knowledge that birds in most video games are pretty much full-on evil. Wow, really? That's just... Wow. There we go. Um, see, the thing is, those birds track to you. They're faster than you. They can be despawned, but they can also infinitely respawn. And, yeah, they suck. That's really all I got else to say about it. Anybody who's played this game knows about the damn birds. Another thing this game does, and we still don't actually know if it's intentional or not, is there's lots of references in this game. You know, we saw the Mike Tyson Punch-Out guys. Those guys down there are the Double Dragon guys. We had uh, the Hammer Brothers. There's actually two or three forms of Hammer Brothers throughout this game. You know, that kind of a thing. So I mentioned praise for this game's art design. Actually, I don't think I've said that yet. Praise for this game's art design is that too many uh, NES games have this problem where the design is too busy and it's really hard to see what's actually going on. Oh crap, I missed. There we go. Um, but not only is this well-designed game and it's always really clear what's going on and where you are and all that fun stuff, but it likes to do things in the background. And that, Like in that scene I was just in, you could see little bits of the statue guys back in the background there, which will be indicative of where we're going, and it's just a tiny little way to flesh out the story and, and the overall setting that we're going through. Tiny dinky little thing, but well done. So here's a question for you guys. Why do we care about Irene at this point? We've encountered her once, and she shot us with a trank dart, and then she gave us a statue and ran away. Or we ran away, I guess. That's it. Why do we care about Irene? I mean, I know she's our eventual love interest, but this is really fast, even for action hero movie purposes, because then we rescue her, and then we fall in love. Yeah. <sighs> So now we're in the depths. Notice there's a few more of the statues down here, like, you know, like I just mentioned. And uh, some of them are even broken now, kind of indicative of not only how the age of the temple, but eh, it's a really subtle nod to just how destructive the demon is, even to people who follow it. 
which admittedly we don't even know until later games, but it's pretty clear that they had some idea of the Mythos already in mind when this game was made. Oh crap, I hate those guys. So, yeah, back here again. Um, you may or may not have noticed this, given how much gameplay footage I'm cutting out of this. But one of my big strategies has been to basically try to despawn enemies as they come, rather than actually fight them. Like that! There we go. Great example. Finally, I got to show that off. And that! Got rid of the bird that way, too. It's actually a pretty common strategy, especially among speedrunners of this game. Catchy, you little bastard. I still don't have any sub-weapons. So I mentioned earlier, I'm just gonna pause here for a second so I can talk freely. I mentioned earlier that most Ninja Gaiden players who are fans of the game, who said it's a great game, myself included, usually play up to a certain point and then we just kinda stop. This is where that is. 5-2. Great music, great graphics, great terrain. This is where the game just kinda starts punching you in the gut every time you walk up to it. Okay, so this is the hardest jump in the game. I'm not actually kidding. Wish me luck. Ah. Yeah, okay, no. <laughs> ah, a couple more tries at it. Okay, take two. Oh my god, I actually made it. No, I had to say something, didn't I? Yep, that was try three. So yeah, this is where what I was talking about earlier about the difficulty and how it's actually nicer than most NES games starts to feel a little bit more punishing and a little bit more frustrating. <clears throat> now we're back here, and uh, losing all that progress, well, let's just say that in a game like this, where every screen, as I like to think of it, is immensely difficult, yeah, that that's a bite. Okay, we're back here now. Time for attempt four. <laughs> come on, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Yes! Yeah, die, man. Die, die, die! Holy crap, I made it! Oh god! You rat bastard! No! Go away! No! Oh my god! You bastard bird! Okay, took three more attempts. This time we're ready for Mr. Bird. God dang. This stage, I swear. Good music, though. God, I love the music in this game. As much, this is such a weird game, because I get so frustrated at this game, but never to the extent where I ever want to stop playing. This probably will get a stamp of frustration in the end, because holy crap, but at no point am I like, God, I wish I would stop playing this game. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm having fun with it. It's weird. I guess the nice visuals, the good sound design, the excellent stage design, even though it's incredibly unfair in its own way. Oh, by the way, now there's flying ninjas shooting shurikens at you, because screw you. Another game over, to empathize my point here. But seriously though, I, I, I have not yet reached a point where I don't want to keep playing. And that's significant to me, as a gamer and as a designer. If you are, make a game that's so frustrating that I want to stop playing it, well then, yeah, that's the point at which you, you failed in your game design. If you can make a game where it's pissing me off, sure, that's normal and it's probably my fault because I'm a terrible gamer, but you make a game where I want to keep going, I want to see what happens next, I want to get to the end. I mean, I really want to finish this game. Hell, I, granted, there's that whole credo that uh, Third and I have where we want to finish every single one of these games, but even regardless of that, I would really like to reach the end of this and beat Ninja Gaiden again. One of the other things I've heard this described as is kind of like a Mega Man game in the sense that on the one hand you want to constantly keep moving, but on the other hand you really have to know when to do what I just did there and just kind of edge your way over or else that happens. If you're not ready for what's coming, you can just get knocked off and die, right? So Bloody Mouth, uh, probably the fight most people dread the most, but it's actually not nearly as bad as the later ones because, yeah, you can just do what I just did.
So here we are, Act 6. This is when the game officially stops punching you in the gut, and... Uh, I don't know, they, they bring out a tank and start shooting you in the nads? I don't even know what to call the game at this point. This is when the game just stops try even pretending to be fair. And I'm not even talking about the, the levels thing, so the one I gave over, which will probably happen soonish, given my record so far, I'll show you what I mean. Now this is the point in which the game starts getting a little bit weird for me, because I don't like, you know, demonic imagery and whatnot. Weird, I know. Something I actually did. Oh, wow. I was low on health. Um, anyways, it's something that I didn't like about the Doom series as well, to be completely honest with you. And uh, other similar franchises. In fact, it's one of the things that I disliked most about the Devil May Cry franchise. Whoa! Didn't mean to do that. Okay, I gotta admit, ninjas flying around on jetpacks shooting shurikens is a pretty cool idea. It's also ridiculously unfair that they're the ones that have that advantage. I challenge all the budding game designers out there to make a game right now about playing a ninja on a jetpack who shoots shurikens. If I'm not mistaken, uh, we're actually pretty close to the hardest jump in the game, as popularized by the Angry Video Game Nerd. Which is kind of a thing now for most people, regardless. <sighs> yeah, that right there. That guy. That guy. That guy. Now, that's how you get past that, by the way. You despawn his ass, and then try not to get hit by the bird. There we go. No! I just need to get across here and not die to the bird. God, I'm sick of your frickin' 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 Maybe I should take back what I said earlier about this game not being frustrating. Well, I guess that's a lie, because I didn't say that. I just said it didn't make me want to stop playing. It's definitely frustrating. Okay. So, um... Whoa, shoot! Okay, this is kind of funny. Mr. Hammer Brothers over there is really confused as to what to do there. Just thought I'd share. <laughs> Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! I made it! I made it! Oh my god, I freaking made it! Oh my god! I need to not die now, because... Yeah, I don't want to do that again. Because that'll happen. Alright. Holy crap. Now the fun part. Six three. Great music though. These areas are a little better example of what I was talking about by the gross imagery in the background. Eyes, demon statues, you know, all that kind of thing. There's tons of stuff like that around here. And pretty much will be from this point onwards. So in addition to the other thousand problems at this stage, I'm facing another sudden threat that hasn't really been a problem thus far. I'm close to running out of time because of how long it's taking me to go through these areas. Ah! And of course, dying resets the timer, so I guess never mind, I'm fine on time because I died. Come on, there we go. God, this area. Ah! Ah! Berserker mode doesn't actually work. I have to time it like I just did. God, I have like no hearts? Power? I don't even know what to call it. Whatever! Oh my god. So i found the best way to take care of this guy is literally just to berserker rush him. And, oh my goodness. 
because this is actually an insanely hard fight if you try to deal with the orbs. And the positioning is such you can only actually reach this thing from this platform, or with a long jump from the right one, or the left one, so... Yeah, that's a, that's a mean little fight right there. Wow, I have a lot of deaths in this game. <laughs> The Jacquio. You will both die. Random orb of doom. Well, where's the reflexes for you? You you look a lot like Agent Smith. No oh, crap. God, I don't have anything for this guy. This is an insane fight. I can't believe I walked into this unprepared. I'm screwed. Yeah, I'm gonna die. I mentioned some only some of the bosses in this game are difficult. Welcome to difficult bosses! Yeah, so look where I am. I just died to Jacquio, and look where I am. Seriously. That, that right there, is what I was talking about, and what I've been hinting at this entire time. The ridiculous, just punching you in the balls level of, oh, guess what, you died? You get to go through all of stage six all over again, because you died to the Jacquio. Some people have actually theorized that that's a bug, because it is so out of nowhere, and so incongruent with the rest of the game, including stage six itself. Because if you know if you die partway through stage six, you start over again. Or if you die on the uh, on the fight against your father, you go right there. But no, 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 you go all the way back to six one. Oh my God! <sighs> well, let's get back to it. Oh my God! Oh my God! I actually got him. I actually got him. Holy freaking crap! Ah! How did I do that as a kid without tearing my own skull out? Uh, and that's not the final boss, by the way. Although the final boss is actually uh, yeah, easier, at least by memory. It, it's all about pattern memorization, and uh, you know, there's a lot more. You can uh, you can actually anticipate where he's going to go, that kind of a thing. We'll see how it goes. I have one health left. I don't know if that's going to carry over or not. I like the idea that I'm killing this thing with a sword, by the way. I, I mean that sincerely, it's kind of cool. For Chrono Trigger, except before Chrono Trigger was out, obviously. And yeah, you can actually destroy these shots. Not that that's really Yes, 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 yes! yes. God, in your face! <sighs> I did it. I beat Ninja Gaiden again. I actually did it. Holy crap. Oh my god. So, in case you were wondering, um, wow. That is such bullcrap at the end there. That is that is the worst kind of artificial difficulty. It's so weird. If it wasn't for that one thing... I'm just going to talk to the ending here. If it wasn't for that one thing at the end, with the bullcrap of going all the way back to 6-1 if you die against Jacchio or, uh, or the demon, I would actually rate this game a lot better. But that one thing against two rather difficult bosses that can kill you based on a few bad pulls or whatever... That's bull right there. There is no getting around that. And that that by itself lowers the quality of this game, in my honest opinion. That is bad design choice. Or a bug, you know, like I mentioned earlier. In the end here, though, I am going to go ahead and give this game uh, a decent amount of props, all things considered. Still well-designed, still enjoyable story, still great gameplay. Um, as I mentioned, up until the end there, up until the 6-1 th reset garbage, um... I never actually got to the point where I was so frustrated I wanted to stop putting down the game. However, counting that garbage and having to go through the 34 deaths to get back to Jacquio, that was that actually irritating. So this game does get a stamp of Save the Princess, because I did actually complete this game, so you know, that counts, obviously. Um, this game also gets a stamp of... <laughs> Or the Qbert stamp, if you prefer, because that is the stamp of frustration. This game did frustrate me. Although, in all honesty, 
The level of frustration is debatable. It Honestly, I probably wouldn't even give to that stamp if it wasn't for that thing right at the end. Having to do that again was just... Oh my god. Not sure if I'm going to give this game the stamp of quality. Um, it's kind of funny. My opinion. This is probably the game in which my opinions changed the most. If you asked me before, I would definitely give it that. But as is now, I don't think I actually will. Because, honestly... This game is a very good game, don't mistake me, but my impressions of it has gone downhill several several notches throughout the game for its frustrating design, for its reliance on memorization, for the, the possibility of just completely screwing you over if, you know, things go poorly in a bad way. You, you almost can't recover in some cases. And, of course, the one I've talked about several times already. However, at the same time, I do actually enjoy this game more than I thought I would. Uh, and among other things, the level design is actually is really brilliant. It's really well done. I really enjoy the preciseness of the controls and the overall layout of how you you play through this game. I just the gameplay. I just I'm just gonna call it that. The gameplay. The enemies are interesting and varied. The graphics are good. The sounds good. The music's great. Um, the story's. Not really bad, but not really good, but it did get me interested enough that I wanted to keep playing, even if for no other reason than to see what happens next, that kind of a thing, you know? Also, there's something that didn't really occur to me until I was playing this game. Sure, it's frustrating, sure it's hard, sure it's kind of irritating at times, but, and I, I am almost unquestionably reading too much into this, but I think that one of the, the pluses of this game is having pulled off some of the difficult stuff that's in this game, you feel like a badass for doing it. You feel awesome for having actually accomplished it and for getting through that level and for getting through that boss and for getting through the other stage. I was, I, I, you heard me just now, I, I was literally pumping my fist, yes, when I finally got Jacquio with one health left. I was just like, yeah! But the whole way through, there are some stunts, I don't know if I'm going to capture all of them, when I go back and edit this, but there are some stunts I pulled which were just plain frickin' incredible looking, and the whole game, you know, for all its flaws, made me, at least, feel awesome for pulling it off, for accomplishing it. And that's pretty cool, that idea of, that's a unique form of reward. You know, too many games will go out of their way, especially modern games, make you look awesome for hitting a button. One button. Uh, quick time events being the worst example of this, but for example, another game that is a good game, Kingdom Hearts Do did, 2 did that with the uh, the X button, the green button, whatever it's triangle, where you had to hit that and you'd do something awesome, but all you had to do was hit the triangle button. That's it. And this, I was actually pulling off stuff that was awesome because it was me. I was that good. I was that skilled. I managed that. And that was sweet and I loved that. So. Not going to give this game the stamp of quality in the end, but is still definitely a good game, and still definitely a game I'll probably even play it again in the future. I, I'd like to do some practice runs on a, uh, a pacifist run, up until like 5-3 or so, and at which point I'm not going to go any further, because screw that. So, that's been my take on it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, thank you for playing? Yeah, thank you for playing! You're welcome. That was awesome. Oh, wait, what? And see you next! Not next time, just next. You're next. So I challenge you guys out there to play this game as well. And uh, see what you think of it. Leave, leave your notes in the comments as always, and I'll see you around next time. Chikoo.